Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to a yes or no style pick a card reading. This is using the Labyrinthos Golden Thread Tarot. You got piles one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, and number ten. Okay, card number one. Nine of Wands. Honestly, I'm really getting a no vibe from this. It, the Nine of Wands usually means that you're really close, that something is about to come to fruition, but that this whole process has been really exhausting and difficult. And so although overall I am getting a no here, there's a possibility that if you went through with whatever you're asking about, it, it could come to fruition, but it would be really difficult, really exhausting, and might not be worth your time and effort, I think you'd be better off putting your energies into something else. So take a look and see how you can like recalibrate, reorganize, reconfigure your problem and your efforts and your energy and see if you can redirect it because this is this is like the last stand and the last gasp. So consider whether this is paying off. It might be time to bail. Um, I mean, this isn't, although I'm getting a no, this isn't really a very firm no for everybody. Some of you, it might really be worth it to, to struggle through. It might be worth it to keep, to keep going. You might get that payoff, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to ask yourself if the energy you're putting into it is really worth the ultimate outcome. And that's going to vary for each of you. So although it's a no, there's some wiggle room here and you're really going to have to use your own discernment on this one. And card number two. Ten of Wands. Weird. The first card <laughs> uh, was Nine of Wands and this is the Ten of Wands. This is a yes. I see the Ten of Wands as a yes. Not like the easiest, most celebratory yes. It means that you are going to get to the finish line. You are going to harvest your crops. You are going to get everything that you've been working so hard for. Um, but there is definitely an element of burden here. You are reaping what you have sown and you're bringing in your harvest, but it is really, really difficult. It is like, and you can see that this energy, there's all these wands all crossed and this like strange little figure down here, like half beetle with wings holding up this eye. It's, this is very interesting imagery on this card. I hope you can get a good look at it here. So, yes, but, this one really has a but, you're going to be exhausted or it's going to be, even if you get what you want, there's going to be, at least for a little while, an element of like, it not being as great as you thought it was because you're so exhausted by all the rest of it. But I think with the Ten of Wands, Typically, once the dust settles and once you settle into whatever it is that's been happening to you, you're going to find that it really was worth it. You just had to, you know, get some sleep and recover from all of your efforts and all of the shit that happened to you. <laughs> and card number three, Knight of Swords. Knight of Swords is a no to me. It's really a uh, really quick paced recklessness energy. So charging forward, not looking ahead, not thinking about the consequences. Uh, he's really, the Knight of Swords is tunnel vision, like in a major way. The only time something like the Knight of Swords would be a yes is like, imagine you saw somebody like trapped under a car and for some reason you decided to, you know, <laughs> pull a tarot card to see what you should do about this person trapped under a car and you pull the knight of swords that would be a sign to me that yeah you need to charge in and act right now and go like like rescue this person you need to charge in and save the day without thinking about the consequences so if you have a situation like that but the thing is in a situation like that you're not actually pulling tarot cards that would never <laughs> if somebody's pulling tarot cards to figure out uh if they should you know charge in and save the day then that's a little odd right that is a misuse of tarot <laughs> So for literally everything else, this is a no. This is saying you need to slow down. You need to take a look at the long-term consequences. You need to see, uh, you know, gather more data, maybe gather other people's opinions. You need to look at the bigger picture because 
this is a warning of don't be too reckless, don't be too careless, and you know, don't have tunnel vision. So this is a no. And card number four, the hermit. Honestly, guys, I see the hermit as a yes. I love this card. I'm a total hermit. I really resonate with hermit energy. I, th I think this is a really, really good sign. It is all about being the light bringer. Look at him. He's got his light that he has found within himself and it is rippling out and shining out into the world. He is the lighthouse. He is the light bringer. He is the, the lamp lighter. He is the lamp lighter. And the best thing about the hermit is that he has gone within to find his light. He didn't need to find it outside of himself. He didn't need to rely on anybody. He didn't look for validation. He didn't need resources. He literally cultivated and found his own light. And now he can shine it out to the whole world and bring that to everyone. It is a beautiful card. It is a yes. Um, obviously, especially if you're asking about anything to do with your own independence, your own resources, your own spiritual development, anything about you personally and your inner work. This is a wonderful, wonderful, auspicious sign. Um, and if you're asking about something more external, like if you are really extroverted um, or if you're just asking about people around you or, you know, any kind of uh, externalizing energy, this would be an invitation to just bring it back to your center point, bring it back to your own light, into your own energy, into your own efforts. Okay, card number five. Hanged man. Uh, this is where I get to disappoint everybody. This is neither a yes nor a no. There was no yes or no answer to this one. This is a wait. This is wait. <laughs> that means your answer could, could in the future turn out to be a yes or a no. But right now, the universe isn't giving you an answer. There's a few possibilities here. Either the timelines are still in flux and your, your particular timeline for this problem isn't locked in and you basically got to wait for more developments to find out which way shit's going to go. Or this is a, this is saying the universe wants you to know that you need to stop looking for guidance outside of yourself. This is saying you have the guidance inside of yourself. You need to look within and you need to go into contemplative meditated, meditative states. You need to, you know, stay home. You need to find solitude. You need to cultivate something within yourself and find your answers and find your wisdom within yourself. So, yeah, this is such an invitation to look within, to stop, to slow down, and to wait. There is no answer for you right now. Once you start to feel energies inside of you and around you shifting, then you can ask about this problem again, and you can get a little bit of insight about where things are heading. But, And that can be as quick as like one hour from now, depending on how quickly you like work through this energetic pocket of the hanged man. But... Or it could be like 10 years from now. It's entirely up to you and a little bit up to kind of external events and external energies. But with hanged man energy, when you are have basically unlocked something within yourself, you need to go within and unlock something. Once that's unlocked, then you can find your future trajectory. Oop. Card number six. The sun, beautiful guys. This is a yes. This is an, an absolute yes. Look at this hand reaching up into the sunshine. Six pointed star with the eye in the middle. The plants are growing. I know this is a really kind of a minimalist, dark kind of deck because it's all black with just these gold, gold streaks. But this card, I think, really brings really emphasizes this sun. So when I pull the sun, guys, that's usually a sign that something really good is coming my way. Like if I pull it in the morning, I, it like without fail, there's some kind of good news. It's not necessarily like huge, massive, although sometimes it has. I have pulled the sun on a day where I got massive, wonderfully unexpected, life-changing good news. So, <laughs> but it's not always that, it's not always like that, that big, right? Sometimes it's something minor, but this is always a sign to me that good news is coming new opportunities are coming your way, you're going to get a chance to flourish and a chance to grow um, either in a small way or a huge way. But the, the, that frequency is there of good news, good shit. Like this is a great sign. 
the only thing about the sun is be careful because, you know, you can get a sunburn. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, put on your metaphysical sunscreen and uh, don't let yourself like escalate your energies too high. You know, if you find yourself, feel yourself like getting like close to being like manic, getting getting really overwhelmed, getting really excited, even about all the good things that are happening, make sure to like, you know, bring it down a little bit. You know, don't go too overboard. Because, you know, if you fly too close to the sun, you know, your wings will melt and you'll fall back to the earth. So just keep that a little bit in mind of don't go too crazy. Don't get too overzealous. But congratulations, guys. This is a great sign. Something good is going to happen to you. <laughs> Card number seven. Five of wands. Uh, that's a no. Everybody's fighting. Everybody's feeling the conflict. Here, I really feel like you are this wand in the middle, this guy holding this, this wand up. I almost feel like you guys are trying to break up a fight between two other people, which is kind of, for me, that's actually unique to this particular wands card, uh, like this particular five of wands in this deck, because you got these crossed wands up here. So you feel like there's this conflict going on around you and you're trying to stop it. I think this card is a, like a sign for you to kind of back off Maybe saying that, you know, these people are going to fight and there's nothing you can do about it. Maybe it's actually good for them to be fighting. Maybe this is like the pattern they're working through right now. Maybe, you know, they need to air their dirty laundry and kind of get this out of their system. And, you know, you sticking your wand in and joining the fight, even if you feel like, you know, you're trying to do best for them and you're trying to get everybody to calm down. There's probably nothing you can really do about it. Maybe the best thing you could do for this external conflict is to just sit in the sidelines and, you know, cultivate peace, cultivate calm sit there and hold a more beneficial frequency and help them energetically. Like instead of trying to stick your oar in and you're just, that's, if you do that, you're just muddying things up. You're just joining the fight. So stand aside, hold yourself at a really positive, it doesn't even need to be positive. You can just hold a neutral energy and that will help everybody come back to a center point more quickly than if you try to stick yourself in there and, that's just agitating and add, adding more conflict. Don't add more conflict. Hold an energy of non-conflict. So that's what I'm seeing with this one. Card number eight. Ace of Swords is a yes. You guys have some kind of new idea. If you're asking about a new idea you just had and you're wondering if you should pursue that, this is a yes. Always, guys, if you've seen any of my other videos and pulled an ace before, you know that you know my take on aces. This is an eight, like this is an indication that you should start, that you should pursue that, that you should do whatever you're asking about, but do not at this point be attached to any particular outcome because the ace does not say anything about the ultimate trajectory of your path. It's not saying that if you start that business, you're going to be a multimillionaire. It's not saying that if you pursue that person, that they're ultimately going to, you know, be your soulmate and you guys are going to have a house in the suburbs with two kids. It's not saying that whatever your idea is, we don't know at this point how it's going to pan out, but the universe is absolutely encouraging you to start that. And remember that just go down your path one step at a time. You can't see that far ahead right now. And that's totally fine. And if you find out a little bit down the road that, you should exit this path that it ended up not being for you that you don't that's totally good because not every road needs to be traveled all the way to the end some roads you go down just a little bit and then you take your first exit and that's fine and that's was that still could have been a really important part of your path so start whatever you're wondering about follow that new idea and just take it from there one step at a time guys for for now don't try to look too far ahead just one problem at a time and card number nine. Hierophant, a wonderful, wonderful yes. This, this is so much about your vertical spiritual alignment, um, like your relationship with your higher self and any, any higher beings or higher powers that you believe in, you know, I always, I run through the list. This could be your higher self, yourself in past lives, your ancestors, your deities, God, source, the universe, energy, literally whatever 
<laughs> whatever your your spiritual terminology is, this is a sign that you are linking up with them and you are essentially downloading information and energy and support and encouragement from higher or other realms. This is like a vertical spiritual energy. With the higher fan, there's also always this kind of little reminder to say, hey, this might be a time where your spiritual practice or, and even if this doesn't apply to spirituality, just take this and ap apply it to that, right? But since it is the Hierophant, I do have to focus on spirituality for this one. So this might be a time for you to do something in a more structured way, in a more, it doesn't even have to be traditional, but if you find a tradition that is appealing to you, go for it. Find a little bit of structure, put a little bit of order into your chaos, and you can find that that will facilitate your growth in a way that complete un unbridled spirituality won't. When it comes to like rituals and traditions and structures in spirituality, I really see that as something that you you put in place and you use for a little while. And then when that starts to stagnate or not serve you anymore, then you let it go. You don't need to, you know, believe a certain religion and follow those traditions forever, but you can take little structures from inside different traditions, use them while they serve you and then let them go. So there's an invitation here to do something in a more structured, possibly traditional way for a little while, as long as it serves you. That will help you evolve your consciousness and ascend. Card number 10. Eight of Wands is a yes, but it is a very short-term, quick-moving energy. If you're thinking about doing something, it means do it right now or the opportunity will pass. There's something you might need to jump on or you're going to miss the boat. Like the, <laughs> I actually see the boat like drifting away from the wharf and it's like you need to get on that boat right now or that's it. Like this is your this is your one shot. This is your last chance. Um, I don't really feel like missing the boat will be terrible for you. So don't like panic on this, but I think there is an opportunity that is within your grasp that it's probably good for you to, to try and try and get on that boat, but to try and seize that opportunity, this is like carpe diem, but don't worry if you don't get this opportunity. If this isn't like something that will really upset your life or really have a huge impact your life. It's sort of like, imagine like finding a hundred dollar bill on the ground. Like maybe it's about to like blow away in the wind and you're like, wow, you know, I got to grab that hundred dollar bill before it blows away and you jump on it and you grab it and you're like, yes, hundred dollars. Awesome. Well, but I mean, if you like had hesitated for a split second and that hundred dollar bill blew away and you missed it, well, I mean, that sucks. And yeah, I'm sure we could all use a hundred dollars. You could have bought a lot of groceries at that. It would have been great. But, you know, you're still going to be fine. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, that $100 will just blow off and somebody else will get it. And it's still okay. So there is a, a fun, like good opportunity for you, for you to seize right now. But at the same time, if you miss it, don't lose too much sleep about it. Your life is going to basically go on and you're going to be good. So this is a yes. Act now. Act quickly. Carpe diem. And that's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.